An overgrown plantation harboring chilling restless spirits, a blood-soaked battleground where the ghosts of the dead still linger, and an iconic homestead whose halls are roamed by the apparition of one of our nation's founding fathers await on this list of some of the most haunted places in Virginia. Let's jump right in. Hey all, and thanks for joining me on this journey through some of the most haunted places in the Old Dominion state of Virginia. Recognized for its expansive historic town sites, delicious seafood cuisines, sprawling nature landscapes, and strong ties to our nation's very founding, Virginia, which was also one of the original 13 colonies and states, boasts a deep mythos wrought with terrifying ghost stories and classic Old Hill folklore. Are you ready to get started? Our first haunt lands us just to the northeast of Richmond at the Cold Harbor Battlefield. The Cold Harbor Battlefield, which is placed within Hanover County in Virginia, is a prominent expanse preserving the site of one of the final battles under Union Lieutenant General Ulysses S. Grant's Overland Campaign, as well as what is widely considered one of the most unnecessary and lopsided confrontations to transpire. Its bounds are shrouded in a surprising number of ghost stories and tales of the otherworldly. Historically, Grant's Overland Campaign was one of a series of simultaneous offensive maneuvers launched against the Confederacy. On May 5th of 1864, his army had crossed the Rapidan River and had entered the wilderness of Spotsylvania, where continued fighting against Confederate General Lee's men ensued. The Battle of Cold Harbor would officially begin on May 31st and would last until June 12th, during which time Union forces would advance towards Richmond, while Lee's Confederate forces would repulse and outmaneuver their opposition in a devastating two-week-long clash that resulted in the loss of 17,000 lives. Following the fight, the battle was ultimately considered a Confederate victory as the Union failed to penetrate their defenses, and eventually, Grant was forced to withdraw his troops, after which he would stealthily cross the James River and march instead towards Petersburg. This victory did little to stall Grant, however, and he would continue to destroy the Virginia Central Railroad to the west, though he would later reflect that he'd regretted Cold Harbor, as no advantage whatsoever was gained when considering the heavy casualties. The Cold Harbor battlefield remains open to this day and is popular amongst both history buffs and paranormal enthusiasts alike, and rightfully so, as, over the years, the expanse has long been associated with chilling local legends, with both guests and officials reporting phantom hoofbeats, the smells of blood and gunpowder without source, and mysterious ghost lights, all activity which becomes all the more prevalent around one in the morning. At the nearby Garthright House, which was Confederate-owned but that was repurposed through the war into a Union hospital, as many as 100 men perished within. In more recent times, several have reported bloodstains appearing on the floors no matter how many cleanings or full replacements they see, as well as the full-bodied apparitions of injured soldiers and the smell of rotting flesh. Additionally, the ghost of Mrs. Garthright has been observed both staring from various windows and drifting through the adjacent Civil War Cemetery. Also reported across the battlefield and confined to no area in particular is ghostly cannon and gunfire, the clash of small arms, and disembodied screams and battle cries. While the full-bodied apparitions of both Union and Confederate soldiers have been spotted all throughout the area, often locked in scenes of battle, and commonly mistaken for actors before they fade slowly away. And on to our second haunt, which is placed just off of the Virginian coast at the ruined Rosewell Plantation. The Rosewell Plantation ruins, which are located in Gloucester County, Virginia, are the remains of an 18th century mansion and its associated grounds that are steeped in both history and tales of the supernatural. Historically, in 1725, construction of Rosewell was started under Man Page I, who aimed to create an estate that rivaled that of the Governor's Palace in Williamsburg. However, Man would never get to see the completion of his prestigious abode as he would pass on in 1730 and would leave the property to his widow Judy. Judith Page, after which their son, Man Page II, would oversee its remaining construction. By this time, the Page's finances would have significantly declined, resulting in Man II selling a good portion of lands tied to the mansion, though the house itself would stay within the family for generations. And in 1837, the Pages would finally sell the residence to one Thomas Booth, who would set to work on a slew of changes, upgrades, and modernizations. 
Over the years, the mansion would change hands a number of times, with each new owner heavily relying on slave labor, and in 1916, a fire would destroy a good portion of the property, after which its remnants were left to weather in subsequent decades. Over time, this site would become a fascination of archaeologists everywhere, and in 1969, it was listed on the National Register of Historic Places. Today, Rosewell remains a popular historic site utilized in a variety of events and is open to the public during scheduled seasons and hours. Chillingly, Rosewell has long been surrounded in stories of supernatural activity, and those who have braved its weathered grounds have later told of extreme cold spots felt in adverse weather conditions, of disembodied footsteps heard cutting through the grass, and of encounters with shadowy manifestations that stalk the living at a great distance. Just off the property lies the ancestral lands of Chief Powhatan and the iconic Pocahontas, along with several native sites and ancient burial grounds. And those who have ventured through these areas have reported phantom drum beats, chants, and ghostly figures clad in traditional native attire, including forms that match the old descriptions of the proud chief and his beloved daughter. Some stories claim that those enslaved at Rosewell actually put a curse on the lands, resulting in its various fires, and the manifestations of these individuals have been known to appear after sundown and have even chased several from the property. Lastly, through a trail in the nearby forests lies an ice house where the bodies of those who had perished at the plantation were kept for days, so that their souls might transition more peacefully. Near this site, many have reported orbs that flit about, accounts of objects moving on their own, and encounters with full-bodied apparitions clad in attire from different eras. Our third haunt takes us to the far western end of Virginia, to the iconic Martha Washington Inn. The Martha Washington Inn, which is placed out of Abingdon, Virginia, is a historic house turned lodging, that sweeping bounds are believed to harbor a range of chilling restless spirits. Historically, in 1832, this estate was first constructed for a War of 1812 hero General Francis Preston and his family of nine children, and at a cost of $15,000, after which the mansion would remain in Preston family hands until 1858, when it was sold for $21,000 to the founders of the Martha Washington College. Notably, this school was dedicated entirely to women and operated for 70 years. It would act as a training grounds to the Confederacy through the Civil War and would also be utilized to treat the wounded. Its 1880 class would see off valedictorian Nellie Nugent Somerville, who would actually go on to become the first woman elected to the Mississippi legislature. And through the Great Depression, the institution would face its decline. Following the school's closure, the site would change hands several times before in 1935 opening as the Martha Washington Inn, which it has operated as ever since. In 1984, the investment firm The United Group would purchase the inn and would initiate an $8 million renovation. And even years later, the site was welcomed to the Chamberly Collection of Historic Places. In the present, this inn remains open to guests, offering an unparalleled and antique experience, and over its years has played host to a number of notable visitors, including Eleanor Roosevelt, President Harry S. Truman, Lady Bird Johnson, Jimmy Carter, and Elizabeth Taylor. From its earliest days as a lodging, this weathered inn has been no stranger to ghost stories, and both staff and guests to its bounds have documented a wide range of supernatural activity, including instances of personal effects that go missing only to turn up later in strange places, accounts of electronics behaving erratically or just outright dying, and encounters with a spectral woman always seemingly searching for something or someone, as some tell it, possibly a former lover. Courtesy of the wartime, several have told of bloodstains that appear on the floors or that even drip down the walls, and of opening various doors to find ghostly scenes of doctors performing primitive procedures on patients bearing grievous wounds, while several have described the disgusting smell of cauterizations, a smell which, having previously worked in the ORs and ERs myself, I can attest that you never really forget. Several informal investigations of the site have yielded crystal clear EVPs, high EMF levels, spectral forms sighted in the peripheral, and hits on communicative devices, while others have told of strange puffs of gray or white smoke that float with seeming sentience, and that are visible to the naked eye or that are spotted later in photography. Lastly, the full-bodied apparitions of several famous guests, being those of Harry Truman, Eleanor Roosevelt, and Lady Bird Johnson, have all been sighted roaming about, seemingly entirely unaware that they are in fact, dead. Okay, so our fourth haunt takes us to the former home of Thomas Jefferson himself, being Monticello. 
Monticello, which is located near Charlottesville, Virginia, is a prominent historic abode that boasts the title of formerly acting as dwelling to founding father of the U.S., Thomas Jefferson, and its prestigious bounds are tied to a number of chilling ghost stories. Historically, work on Monticello would begin in 1768, and the estate would quickly take on the build of a full-on villa. Through the early 1770s, Jefferson, along with his new wife Martha, would move into the South Pavilion. And following Martha's passing in 1782, in 1784, Thomas would leave the site in order to serve as Minister of the U.S. to France. Over the years, Jefferson would expand upon Monticello and would actually continue this work up until his passing in 1826, after which his only surviving daughter, Martha Jefferson Randolph, would inherit the property. In 1831, Martha would sell the site to one James Turner Barclay, and in 1834, Barclay would sell again to one Uriah P. Levi, a strong admirer of Jefferson, who would set to work on preservation and modernization efforts. Following Levi's passing, his heirs would argue over this estate for a time, until 1879, when his nephew Jefferson Monroe Levi would buy out the other heirs, after which, much like his uncle, he would set to work on various restorations and the site's preservation. In 1923, the nonprofit Thomas Jefferson Foundation would purchase the house from the Levi's and would maintain the family's stalwart preservation efforts. In 1960, Monticello was designated a U.S. National Historic Landmark. In 1966, it was designated a spot on the National Register of Historic Places. And in 1969, the site was accepted as a Virginia landmark as well. In the present, Monticello remains open to the public as a historic and educational venue, accommodating all manner of events, while offering tours of its expanse to any with an interest. Fitting the bill as your classic historic haunted house, Monticello and its grounds are absolutely saturated in a slew of old ghost stories and tales of encounters with the inexplicable, and both staff and visitors have reported doors that open and close on their own, disembodied footsteps and whispers heard emanating from empty spaces, and strange instances of dizziness experienced namely in the parlor that have become so intense they've caused several to faint. A slew of informal investigations of the site have yielded high EMF levels, chilling EVPs, and orbs that are both visible to the naked eye and that are also captured in photography or video, while others have described phantom puffs of smoke that drift around with seeming sentience, and the smells of cooking food, tobacco, perfume, and cologne without source. A range of full-bodied apparitions and more ominous shadowy figures have been sighted all across Monticello, and while reports are numerous, some of the most prominent forms detailed are those of a mysterious blonde woman in white who's often spied drifting around unnaturally, and two ghostly little girls that have been both sighted and heard playing about. Lastly, and most famously, the spirit of Thomas Jefferson himself is believed to remain on site, and is usually documented either in his old bedroom, relaxing and reading a book or getting ready for bed, or wandering about while whistling old-timey tunes, a practice he was especially fond of in life. Last but not least, our fifth and final haunt lands us at the Virginia State Capitol Building. The Virginia State Capitol Building, which is located in the state's capital city of Richmond, is a prominent historical construct acting as seat of state government to the Commonwealth of Virginia that actually houses the oldest elected legislative body in the whole of North America, being the Virginia Grand Assembly, and its aged bounds also play home to a number of chilling ghost stories and local legends. Historically, following the 1619 meeting of the Virginia House of Burgesses, the state's first capital would be held in Jamestown for a time. However, later, in 1699, when it was decided that the government should be relocated inland to Williamsburg, work on a new capital building was started and would conclude through November of 1705. Notably, this new capital would serve up until the American Revolutionary War, during which time, Governor Thomas Jefferson would urge the capital be moved a final time to Richmond. Legislature would convene in Richmond for the first time on May 1st of 1780, out of a rudimentary makeshift building near Shaco Bottom. On August 18th of 1785, the cornerstone for our current Capitol building was laid, and by 1792, the site was complete enough to host the General Assembly. Through the Civil War, the Virginia Capitol would also serve as capital and as a second home to the Confederacy. When Richmond fell, John Brown's legendary carpet bag full of documents was hidden somewhere between the wall and the plastering and has actually never been recovered. And following the war, in 1870, the large courtroom on the second floor of the site would be so overcrowded during a Supreme Court hearing that it would actually collapse and would fall down on the House of Delegates chamber, resulting in 62 deaths and in the injuring of 251 others. 
For a time, a full demolition of the construct was demanded by many. However, over the years, it was decided that a rebuilding was a better option. In 1904, the site's east and west wings were added, and over the years, the Capitol building would welcome a slew of renovations and upgrades. More recently, in 2003, the Assembly would approve an $83.1 million restoration of the campus, with work beginning in 2004 and completing by 2007. And by 2021, the Virginia National Guard was activated on site just prior to the election of President Joe Biden, and following an FBI warning of possible armed protests at various U.S. capitals. The Virginia State Capitol building remains open into the present, acting as a center of government to the state and offering guided tour options for every day of the week. Coming as no real surprise, this weathered old state house with its long history wrought with conflict and tragedy has long played host to a series of ghost stories and local legends. With both staff and visitors reporting extreme cold patches felt in adverse weather, instances of doors opening and closing or unlocking by themselves, objects that move around on their own, and run-ins with shadowy figures that lurk in its darkest corners. Through the Civil War and during the takeover of Richmond, while the rest of the town was burning, the Capitol building would remain, and a number of Confederates, in a desperate attempt to escape their fates, ran in fear for safety within, only to be cut down mid-flight. The terrified spirits of these Confederates have been sighted sprinting in a panic through the surrounding area, their tortured screams echoing through nearby streets, only to disappear right before reaching the Capitol. Lastly, the spirits of the 62 individuals claimed in the floor collapse of 1870 have been viewed roaming around as if in a trance, many of them still bearing broken limbs or brutal wounds courtesy of the disaster, while the full-bodied apparitions of several past representatives have been observed keeping an eye on the property, and incidentally, over the powers that govern our country as a whole. Thanks for joining me on this journey through some of the most haunted places in Virginia. If you enjoyed hearing my histories and ghost stories, subscribe to my channel, throw this upload a like, and share me with anyone you feel could use a good scare. I'll catch you all next time.